Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show number. <laughs> and we're uh, we're getting started a little late. I'm a little, a little like, 438, Zork. 438. 438. 438. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, we're, we're a little off. We're a little. We actually had an interview uh early. We, we switched things up a little bit. So please go check out the Indie Mayhem Show number 38. Uh, Bryce Remsburg, of course, uh, the great announcer and uh, referee extraordinaire with Chikara Pro Wrestling, uh, joined us on there. We had a really good interview, so we're really high off of that. Uh. And of course, the fantastic boss battle that just happened with Bobby F. J. Town, who joins us. No, that's Papa Lunchbox. There's Bobby F. J. Town from Johnstown, PA. Hey, guys. I'm going to play the lottery tonight with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that goes, Bobby. Yeah, I'm going to walk right into the uh, the local convenience store seats here, and I'm going to go, hmm. <laughs> Give me those numbers. You know, the sad and part is they probably get, yeah, that, like, get all, the they probably get that like all the time. Yeah. Jerks. Also with yeah. us from the greater uh, Pittsburgh area is the Riz. I was also on Boss Battle, and it was kind of awesome. There you go. There you go. And also so joining thanks, us, thanks for you know telling everybody that I was on I was on Boss Battle. So it's not like I was off Boss Battle for you know month month or two. I see, I see how it is. And also joining us from deep deep in the Appalachian, where they make the sheets boom boom sauce, is DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is closest. Hey guys, uh, I made it just in time. I just got out of the shower, showering off all that sweet, sweet boom, boom sauce. Uh, let me tell you, it is great for your pores. It is great for your pores. Poor explosion. Awesome. That's a very regional joke I just made. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, wow. they don't have sheets in Texas, for instance. Sheep? I thought you said sheets. I said sheets. Sheets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Making the sheets boom, boom sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your wrestling mayhem show. Of course, we're broadcast here from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. You can find oh, out right from, now. <laughs> we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Dot com. Dot com. You can subscribe to us, follow us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, and video and audio formats. You can also drop us a line at a great email address <laughs> at Good Times. Good Times. Good Show. Dot com. Whoa. What? What? Too much. You all right? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Too, too much. On you. Too much. I, I kind of snuck out when I was doing good times. Oh, also, okay. drop us a line that phone number at 412-206-WMS0. You can find us on the uh, Facebooks, on the Googles, Pluses, as a Wrestling Mayhem Show, and uh, uh, on Twitter, um, at Mayhem Show. Hey, big thanks to Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com, for our intro, outro songs. And, um, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com, more or less around 9 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes we have to jump a little schedule around to, to make some of the interviews work and stuff. So thanks thanks everybody for playing along with that. And I'll, hey, now we're live on YouTube Live. So nice, solid stream. You guys have been digging it all Hi, night. YouTube. Some of you guys are transmitting Hi. it to your Chromecast on your TV. Well, uh, thank you everybody who joins us here on Tuesday night. You guys really make the show add a whole new, uh, a whole other element than all the people that we get on here um, um, in studio or or, or otherwise. Uh, so thank you very much for everybody that participates in any way to the show, and especially you guys to tell your friends, especially you guys on the Patreon, patreoncom slash show, which includes our friends from the Wrestling Revolution dot com please go check it out join their discussion board have some conversation i'm actually highly Ooh. encouraging the mayhemers i want a mayhemer invasion guys mm-hmm. i want I'm a mayhemer invasion on there. Right you on there riz is on there he's doing it right i'm doing it 
Get on there. Be a part of the conversation. They've been so good to us and supporting the show. I want to make sure we're sending some people over there. I want to make sure we're uh, mayhemming up the uh, conversation as well uh, to get some stuff going on over there. They got they got a great board going on. Uh, and also, thanks to Bo Diggity! Woo! Uh, you can support us as well. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. This week, if you're on there and you get gold, you'll have, see the debut of Pantscast. No, shorts cast. Shorts cast. Oh, shorts cast. Shorts cast. Yeah, we changed it. We changed it. Shorts cast. Yes. Uh, so let's get started. The only way we know how with the fan mail. Uh, LB, do you want this one from our uh, esteemed sure. writer? Sure. It's real short. To the WMS Nation, it was so close letting Mark Henry get out of the accolade and letting Rusev loose and making Lana feel upset. Even Jack Swagger couldn't do it. Heck, Hacksaw Jim Duggan couldn't do it either since he's old. But I wish Kurt Angle could return to the WWE to stop this mess once and for all. What do you guys think? PRK, a.k.a. Mr. Tech, would drive. I'll tell you right now, I hope Kurt Angle never comes back because fuck oh. Kurt Angle because he's a broken down piece of shit and I don't need to see that old wrinkly penis looking motherfucker flopping around on. Oh, wait, no, I do want to see this. Because you've got uh, Rusev, who looks like um, uh, Ron Jeremy, <laughs> and Kurt Angle could show up, and he could be his penis. I'm on board. Let's do it. Zord? Um, I, huh. Well, you know, I, I wonder, because how far are we going with the Rusev thing? Who's going to be Mr. America that finally topples him? Who's going to be Mr. the Ron? Mr. America! Oh, <laughs> that's how Hulk Hogan gets back to WrestleMania. Yep. We're never going to let you back into wrestling, Hulk Hogan. You're too old. Mr. America, no. you get a match at WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. America. Thank you, brother. I just got to get my walker over here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bobby F. J. J. Town um, is Hot Wheels RWA. Sorry about that. Whoa, what? I gave him the wrong uh, Twitter. So. Oh, um, but... The way I see it, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this from probably two of you. Fuck um, you. No, no, no. No, not me? Okay. Not you. You're the one. Because um, as of right now, John Lord Cena Lord. is in the Rocky Three mode. Yes. He is He is facing a guy who is, tough, who is a lot stronger than he is. Mm -hmm. He has lost the championship to the stronger guy. And now this is his time to come back. Mm -hmm. And then when he does, he will then face off against Rusev, a.k.a. Ivan Drago, with Mrs. Drago by his side. Mm -hmm. If if Cena, if oh, yeah. Cena loses uh, this uh, potential next match with Brock Lesnar uh, and doesn't get the belt back overall, he gets Rusev as, as in-betweener stuff. Even You know, honestly, even if he wins, he gets Rusev. Rusev is like the tweener Survivor Series. Uh, we got to do something, guy. Or maybe they're they, they building. They they wouldn't be building Rusev if they weren't going somewhere with him. Yeah, which is fodder for John uh, Cena. I, I respectfully disagree with Bobby F J Town uh, because Ryback. Yeah, he he is the that's, Ryback. That's true. Although okay. you know what? No. I respectfully apologize to Bobby FJ Town because they built Ryback for a while and then had him fight CM Punk and then he went away. Yeah. So they were building something with him. Good mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the whole point is to build a credible threat that you mm -hmm. haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Like or Orton's, Orton's a credible threat because he's had the title so many times and now he's an old credible threat. But to build a new one. Um, and unfortunately, after you've built a credible threat like that with a Rusev, with a Ryback, and then they finally lose, like it's kind of the Goldberg syndrome. It's like, okay. Now they're just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, Goldberg was great because he was undefeated. And you take that away and you take away a shoddy way. And that's it. You know, uh, you can't just have Rusev build up, build up, build up. And then while John Cena wins, you know, yep. Goldberg, it's, it's the great. cycle. It's sorry, Bobby. No, go ahead. No, mine was dumb anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the cycle of monsters in WWE. They're dominant and they're dominant and they're dominant for so long and then they lose, and then all they do is lose, but they still want you to buy them as dominant. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 that's it's the Kane syndrome. Kane is still, oh, he's still so dangerous and violent and crazy, and he's a threat, and he's a big guy. Well, Kane doesn't win shit. 
Big Show. Yeah, yeah Big, Big Show, show. Big same show. thing. Big, Big Show cries. They talked about it on Countdown. <laughs> Riz, he loses a lot. You got to yeah. admit it. Yeah. 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 Right back. <laughs> You know, these these were horrifying entities at one point, and now they lose constantly. But anytime somebody's put in a match with them, oh, shit, he's in trouble now. He's fighting this big guy. Every time they're in the Rumble, it's oh, yes. how, how are they going to get this guy over? He's so big. <laughs> Meanwhile, a big guy up. has almost never won the Royal Rumble, except yeah, for Big John Studd. Big John Studd. Yep. Yokozuna. Under, Undertaker won. Nailed Yokozuna. It. Did Yokozuna yeah. win? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, he did because uh, Macho Man tried to pin him, and that's when he kicked out and threw him over the top rope. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Wow. Mach- Macho wow. Man pulled a uh, Cameron. <laughs> ah. Hmm. Um, we got another email here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dear Mayhem Brethren. Oh, my fucking brain. Cena, okay. Cena winning after uh, Lesnar destroyed him. So fucking stupid. Fucking WWE can't make their golden boy look weak. And then <sighs> and then the next night we had to sit through a six-man tag rematch and Cena Orton for the seven... Oh, God, that's a lot seven of comments. Tri- I got it. What is it? Seven trillion, three hundred ninety-nine million, billion, sixty-four thousand, one hundred seventy-seven... Thousand. Oh, you got sixty-four million. Sixty-four million one hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred thirty-four. To the Wait, third God. power time. This is that took way too long for us to get past that point of the email. Yeah. Uh, no math during the mayhem we're, show. We're I tried to do math. This is so fucking stupid. I hate. I hate you all. And that entire pay per view is a complete and total pile of llama shit. Wow. Wow. Fuck Wait me, WWE. It. No. Fuck you. Seriously, guys, please tell me this kind of drivel isn't the only thing that I'm going to have to uh, be hearing on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a switcheroo. It's a swerve. Uh, Question: Are you Vince Russo? Oh, no, uh, no. Are you so Vince much, Russo? He's a much better writer than Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> Questions number one. So one Josh Matthews has been spotted at a spiffy looking office uh, building that TNA calls their corporate office. I like Matthews, but I have trouble determining which dated commentator he should replace. Tanae or Taz? Well, Tanae, I think he's a play by play guy for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. But he, he has been a wrestler, though. He's been a wrestler. I don't think he's going to be a wrestler. No, he's not going to be a wrestler. No, not at this point. No, no, no. I mean, he's been a wrestler, so he knows the insider terms. So he could be Taz. Okay. But honestly, I don't care. (laughs) Because there is no TV (laughs) deal for them to do anything with right now. Because they are in limbo. Hell, there's not going to be any shows for three months until that pay-per-view. Bingo. They just just brought in uh, Josh Matthews to carry Al Snow's bag around. Oh, that's at least his employer. (laughs) Good for him. This is employed. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm thinking today myself. So, uh, number two, I would like to hear what you guys think of this concept known as match of the year. What goes into determining what qualifies for your personal match of the year? Most memorable. It does not have to be the most technical match for me. You know, um, um, geez, what what could I, I think qualify as match of the year? You know, uh, I can't think back through the year. It's been such a crazy ass year, to be honest. Uh, so far, does he want our match of the year? Uh, but now, what are the what Is are the, the what are the qualifications? Oh, okay. And I'm trying to think what what would I consider a match of the year? And then what what are the great things of that match of the year? Like I would I would consider like some of these uh, Undertaker Shawn Michaels match mm-hmm. of the year. Maybe not mm-hmm. the most technically sound, but had the highest stakes, had the highest emotional value. I think uh, I think emotion in a match trumps mm-hmm. technical ability in the match. Yeah. yeah I, I think you're right. I think one year uh a mat what was considered a match of the year contender was um uh Seth Rollins. I think he was Tyler Black. This was before he was in the WWE and he had a match against someone i don't remember who but basically he got the shit kicked out of him for the entire match and then he came back and won it at the end and it was so good and so emotional and it was widely considered a match of the year contender and it was so popular that that caught the eye of the wwe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it got the attention that he needed to be brought into for tryouts it has to tell a story 
and yes. within the match in order for it to be considered like um it's kind of early but as of right now that NXT NXT Fatal 4 way told a pretty damn good story uh-huh. during yeah. the match and that that is my candidate for match of the year I so think, far I think most I think I'm with you most of your candidates are coming out mm-hmm. of NXT right now for match of the year yep. um because I think they're investing you and and we talked a lot about uh, uh, uh earlier with Jakar like how the casual and the 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 hardcore fan can both kind of get into it i think i think for the most part if you drop into if you only watch like the nxt takeovers you are very very pleased you know and don't really need all that build you know um yeah uh i think wrestlemania has a pretty good matches of the year mm-hmm. i think i think yeah. honestly i think triple h daniel bryan could qualify um i think several of these matches with uh the shield tag teaming um i guess we're thinking more end of the year but like the series with those like the shield and the gold dust or the rose brothers um and and even the usos were in like some of those were fantastic shield, shield wyatt's was really good too shield wyatt's yeah oh so that was that was super that was red hot mm-hmm. when they were going through that um i think wyatt's even had some great matches I- himself i know we're not, not big on like what they're doing with him now uh but i think he's had some killer matches uh his match with i remember his match with daniel bryan at the royal rumble here in pittsburgh yep. was fantastic definitely the best match of the was night there. fantastic oh yeah oh definitely and it was the first one we were in trouble that was the yeah. first match you know <laughs> um certainly Bray, certainly Bray Wyatt's another example of my previous point of he's a monster he's a monster and now he's supposed to be still a threat yeah what the fuck bobby. is happening bobby what the fuck bobby what even why get the phone and it's throw it so- out the window it was so loud. I want to see you throw it out the window, Bobby. It's right throw next it to me. Throw it. I want you to Bobby, see you unplugging why? it from the wall. Why was it so loud? I just threw it back in the background. It was right next to me. That's I believe why. you. I believe you. But, that looks believable. Lunchbox, lunchbox, continue, your, continue your point. I threw why? it away. Why was it so I threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> throw the phone away, Bobby. <laughs> we got a live call into the studio. <laughs> They called the wrong studio. <laughs> they they called my studio. You okay, LP? Hey, that's uh, okay. Fox, are you okay, buddy? It burns. <laughs> Live television, everyone. <laughs> anyway, no, it's all right. Um, yeah, no, Bray Wyatt. He's he's quickly heading down that path. He's a monster, and he doesn't win matches, but he's a credible threat. Supposedly, that was all. <laughs> There's no, you know what, and I think as far as the credible threats, the thing that is missing, I mean, we're on a whole different topic, I'm sorry, uh, but the thing is missing is squash matches. Like, the Wyatts aren't out there destroying people week to week. The Wyatts That's are out true. there getting stuck in Cena squash matches. But they were, though. But they were. Oh, yeah, they, when they, they started off, they know time. how to slow build it and everything. What I think they need to do with uh, with Bray to make him a real big bad credible threat is the same thing they did with all the other ones and put the world title on him. Mm-hmm. Give him a give him a run, give him a short run, let him be a monster for a little while. Let him and be then in John the mix. Cena beats let him, him for the title. Let him be in the mix for a life. bit, like Cesaro. Like when I threw Cesaro in there. Now Cesaro for not you know what he hasn't. I don't know. You know Cesaro's win loss record. Not very good. I don't either. think it even matters. I, I heard I heard he lost ten title shots in a row. Wow. He's title lost shots? 10. He's had 10 title shots and he's lost 10 of them in a row. Huh? Gross. Yeah. But every yeah. time, but every time he steps up, you're like, eh, I could make it. They could, they could give it to him. You know, mm-hmm. every time he steps in there, I think it yeah. could be the time. Uh, I don't know what it is about. I don't know if it's just because I'm a fanboy for Claudio Castagnoli. I don't know what it is, but every time I'm like, okay, WWE's sure. going to take your son. I take it. Yeah. They're going to take my son. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, the news is apparently WWE is taking pro Cesaro signs from the crowd. I don't believe it. Uh, and when Bobby said that just now, I thought he said son. <laughs> They're going to take your son. I will find now you I'm, and I will kill you. Now I'm double disappointed. <laughs> Anyways, um, any other, any other, oh, from the chat room, Garza saying good wrestling plus good story plus build up plus crowd plus consistency. And on top of that, no, no more squashes. There's there's too many squashes, he says. Really? I, I agree. Okay. Squash matches are bullshit, and we need to get rid of them. Okay. I, I'd say, I mean, 
then what's the what's the point of showing somebody's dominance in the in the business if they just go out and beat some I mean, I mean, the, the the difference is like we don't have squash matches the way we used to. We don't have jobbers. We have like just kind of in house jobbers. Like your R Truth gets thrown gets gets thrown to the wolves, or your or your Zack Riders, or your Heath Slaters, right? Your R Truth. What? No, I agree. Wait, what did I say? <laughs> just the just the way you said it. What you call them? Your R Truth. Your R Truth. Your R Truth and your Dolph Ziggler's, and uh, not your Dolph Ziggler's, but your uh, your your Zack Riders and your Heath Slaters and your Tyus O'Neils. Mm-hmm. Like Titus O'Neil is a big dude that shouldn't be squashed. Oh, I know. You Poor see Titus him next to those guys on NXT last week? Holy Love crap! That guy. That's a big dude. <laughs> and I always feel like he should be wearing more clothes. He seems awkward. <laughs> He's else? so big that he seems extra nude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what would make sense on him. <laughs> let's 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 dress Titus O'Neil for a moment here. How, how would he... <laughs> Wow, what did I just walk back into? I like it. Let's unpack <laughs> hey, how's that phone doing, Bobby? It's all right. Oh, Is right. it out the window I, yet? I threw it out the window. How? Um, we got another question, guys. Wait, okay. wait, what are we, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? Gonna, you got something? What, what are we going to uh, put him in Roman Reigns' uh, bulletproof vest thing? <laughs> <laughs> wait, who? Titus O'Neil. Titus <laughs> O'Neil. <laughs> Titus O'Neil is not a member of the Shield. I am. Swap sorry. it. He's like, nobody else is using it. For or next... Bray Wyatt stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just put that him in just starts growing fun. a giant beard, you know. <laughs> you know, playing Supercard, you get some weird matchups and weird, like, teams and everything like that. And uh, somebody had Roman Reigns teaming with Edge in a tag team. And I thought, God, if Edge was still wrestling, he would be so awesome as a member of the Shield. Wouldn't that have been, a, yeah. wouldn't that have been super cool? would have been the lead. <clears throat> yeah. That would be nice. Alas. Um, question number three. Uh, I have been watching guys like Dean Ambrose and Trin- Prince Devitt on the indie- independent circuit for, uh, excuse me, independent scene for years, and I feel like I have a hometown guy feel when I see them succeed. Warms your heart a bit, you know? Is that a question? I think so. <laughs> yes, I, agree. Yeah. I, I think that's exactly well, what I'm talking I about. Guess... With Ces- that's what I'm talking about with Cesaro. You know, I... it's like I've seen him in Chikara, in IWC, in person. I've talked to the guy briefly, you know, it's like, that's our dude, you know, same with the, same with the Corey Graves, SJK from the show that we've had on this show a couple of times, you know, same with, you know, same with Devin Devinson. The same with Devin Devinson. Him. Oh my God, dude, we are going to be the guys that <laughs> pop the hardest when we see Devin Devinson uh, debut in a ring in Pittsburgh or, or, or whatever it is. Like, like and he better do it at Devin Devinson. Yes. Too. We're talking about the former Logan Shulo, apparently um, uh, Samuel Elias. I keep, is that right? I, I keep no, spot- Samson. Elias, Elias Samson. Yeah. Samson. Elias Samson. You know, until I see it, I'm not gonna believe it. I keep I keep forgetting his Twitter. You know, I I keep forgetting what his Twitter is, and I have to go look for it. But and, I, am and I only know it's the right one because he's still using the picture from his last night in IWC. <laughs> so, um, where are we going from here? What was the question? Let's, there was no trust, question. Let's trust Devin Devinson. We like uh, no. we like uh, when our guys do stuff. I'll leave Devin Devin alone. He's well dressed. Um, no, yeah. So the hometown feel, guys. I mean, what do you guys, uh, aside from like people who have had on the show, is there anybody you have that independent to Riz? I know you watch IWC for way longer than I have. You know, is there anybody that's that's popped up that you know over the years, and you're like, that's one of my guys. Um, not not right now, but I mean, back, the back in the day, I kind of had the, the the when when Colt Cabana was in. OVW and and sometimes in WWE, mm-hmm. I did have that little kinship of saying, "I saw that guy. He's he's pretty cool. I hope he goes. I hope he does well." But it's but I I I don't have somebody to go. Oh my god! If because because to me, if I have that kinship with somebody in the WWE and that that like that friend mentality that I think I have with a wrestler. It's going to bite back at me when that guy doesn't succeed. And then you're just stuck there and going, oh, this guy, the w, I'll be one of those guys that goes, the WWE doesn't know what talent means. Because that's, so I don't have anybody, anybody like that because of that. 
um, it's it's cool. It's cool that Prince Devitt and and uh, who, who's the other one? Steen. He mentioned Steen. Oh, oh, he mentions. Uh, I'm sorry. He mentions uh, Ambrose. Yeah, like it's cool that Ambrose and 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 Devitt make him feel that way. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I I don't have somebody like that because. They're, they're they're professional wrestlers. They they do this for a living. They have millions of people. That, and me, if I'd want to just say, hey, just go out there and do it, and I'll be happy. But if they don't, I'll also be happy because I get to see them whenever I want. You are. A comp- I get to do that. You you are a complicated man. <laughs> I am complicated, I complicated wrestling fan. I just you're, myself, you're afraid of disappointment. I, I don't know why you watch WWE. I'm, oh God, I don't, <laughs> WWE. I don't know why I watch professional wrestling. Have you seen TNA? Uh. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Uh. But uh. Anyways, anyone else got anything on that before we move on? I hope to one day see Manchild in the WWE. Oh man, another yeah. one. I we made, we made pop so harder. Weird. We may pop harder for Manchild than we would for uh, Shula when he debuts as whatever <laughs> right, the hell right, his here, name's here, supposed here. to be. Can, can we like go back to the question of who would you like to see in WWE? Manchild. Who you like? Like like who's on the Indies now? You would like to see? Like on the Indies now, who are you pulling for to be in WWE? Fourteen. I don't know. Or, they just yeah, did. They just cleaned in, house in on my wish list. Yeah. <laughs> the, really, uh-huh. with these last few acquisitions, like that's that's my wish list right now. Like I, there's not really many. Left. <laughs> I got. I, how about RJ City? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go. Uh, no, I can see RJ. More like a local town. Uh, yeah. as far as like on our side, no, I can see an RJ City. I can see a, especially RJ. Oh my God, they would love him there. Um, oh, wait. What? Riz. Yes. Don't, don't pick like five, Sorg. We all have to pick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're gonna, you're gonna steal from all of us. Yeah, you're gonna steal everybody's. What do you want, lunchbox? Oh, uh, ACH kills it just every time I see him. So yeah, I'd love yeah. to see him do. At, no, all right, no. I was about to was just break question? my rule. Go ahead. What was your question? No, I was telling Sorg not to pick to just pick one because we all had to pick. But there's so many out there. Said there's so many first. out there. There's so many out there. LB, yeah, um, Bobby, how about you? You got any? I'll go with Adam Cole from ROH. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see him in WWE. He's got it. He's got it. Mm. He's one of those dudes. He's, you know, you can kind of tell when when you put a camera on somebody and how they react to it. It's like, yep, he's got it. That guy, he's, and he's doing local commercials in Pittsburgh. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, I saw one the other day. For what? For like a law firm or something. Yeah, it was like a law firm or insurance or something like that. <laughs> what? There's a picture nice. of Mario Lemieux on the wall the, in the background. Yeah, during like the ROH shows. No, I saw it not during an ROH show. Was it on the same it channel? During, it was during the Penguins game. Oh, wow. It was, on, it was on CW the other night. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Um. There's that. <laughs> Riz? I already said RJ City. Oh, I'm sorry. So I technically didn't say something. I was going to say Dalton Castle. Nice. Because, yeah, he could have some fun there. I want um, to mention um, uh, 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 Ray Rowe. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. he could do well. Mm-hmm. Ray Rowe would be in that same monster no. category, though. Oh, I don't know about that. He's no? not as big as you think he is. Yeah, I think I think he's big as an indie guy. Yeah, I mean he's no, he's big for an indie guy. Like what? It, this is one of those things where I'm like. You know, everybody seems bigger, and then you go have the meet and greet at, at an intermission. I'm like, I'm taller than that guy, you know. And, and but he's like, he's more of a Ryback, though. He's yeah, he's no, strong. No, nah, he's, he's he's like buff. steel worker strong. You know, yeah. I mean, he's like like he looks like he could be brute strength st- strong, and he looks even stronger because of the way he does his suplexes. You know, <laughs> I'd ra- I'd rather have Ray Rowe than Bull Dempsey. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you oh, Michael, my, what about Michael Elgin? Yeah, same thing. But again, Elgin, Elgin's yeah. kind of a small dude. He's yeah. throwing around small ROH dudes, you know? Um, I, I, and you know, that's the unfortunate part. Like, you look at Steen. Steen looks like a monster. He's probably going to look tiny next to a John Cena. Mm-hmm. To be honest, uh, I, I don't know his size, but considering uh, his comparison to, like, a Sami Zayn, 
uh, in those matches, I was somebody that was very similar to Stanley Zane in a mask. Um, no, I, I and that's a problem. Like like NXT, I think NXT is going to shine because you're going to have guys that have amazing ma- like Ring of Honor does. It is their Ring of Honor. It really is because these guys are going and and most of those guys in that four way like they're all Tyson kid size, right? Uh, I was calling his other name. Uh, uh, Neville is tiny, tiny guy, buff but tiny guy. That's how he can do his flips. Um, mm-hmm. and 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 it's hard to put a guy like that believable against, uh, you know, a John. Your John Cena's and Randy Orton's, you know, much like like you know Daniel Bryan looks like a tiny guy, but he can pull it off. And there's only a certain type of guy that can. So, let's finish this email. Yeah. <laughs> which guys have you watched the rise? Oh, this is this is actually the part where you asked the question. Which guys have you watched rise from the Indies to a prominent spot to take uh you that that make you the happiest seeing their success because of their emotional attachment you have to their career? I think we've we've addressed what we just said. What we just said <laughs> retroactively. Uh, I'll just fix that in post. Uh, that's my time, good gentlemen. My Twitter has been doing its best to spread the disease known as ignorance. I have to go on one last tangent. Everyone experiences everything different in life. We all have our own individual taste in what we enjoy. But this idiotic idea that we, the self-ordained critic of all things revolving how wrestling should be performed, presented, or even thought of, we somehow have the individual right to insult other people on the interwebs for enjoying what they enjoy is perhaps the most narrow-minded thought process in life. Welcome to the internet. Uh, it goes for TNA fans, WWE fans, ROH fans. I will uh, I will extend to that. Uh, Apple fans, uh, Android fans, etc., etc. PlayStation fans, Xbox, Xbox uh, whatever Nintendo fans are left. Uh, not a single fucking one of us, except Bobby. What? Huh? Except Bobby, uh, are special enough to determine who should like or dislike anything. It's yeah, this ironic you guys all suck. <laughs> it's uh, this Bobby moronic cast judgment on this us. moronic figuring that fo- forces people inside the wrestling industry to think us fans are, uh, are are jackasses rather than educated individuals who enjoy the art of wrestling try looking at things from the other people's perspectives every now and again and understand that just because you have an opinion in no way means it's special enough for you to have to force it on anyone. Sorry guys, but the incessant tweets of bitching back and forth have gotten me gotten gotten on my tits. And not wow. in a good way. Lunchbox does with and not in a good way Lunchbox does with Mad Mike. Rant over. Regards Dustin. <laughs> that was that got weird um, at the end. Wow. That got insightful. Like, I don't and I don't weird. know what like what do you Dustin's, do with that? Dustin sick as sick as some shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's. I think it's a perfect time for a sponsor. Hey guys, um, big shout outs to our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the street here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Please check them out. Great pizza. Um, that will not accidentally give my pizza to somebody else, like the other place I went to on lunch today. Um, what? yeah, what? yeah. I had my last Ooh. couple Sicilians, and somebody else walked away with it. What? Yeah. Yeah, that is pizza theft. That is pizza theft, and is- suckers. I don't know how they do things in Mount Lebanon, but uh, in in uh, Sorgatron Media, Mecca of the Woods, that's like <laughs> that's like eye for an eye right there. Lose yeah. a hand, pie uh, for a pie. but you don't want pie for a pie. <laughs> Bobby, yes, Coda, Coda, Hammurabi, <laughs> pie for a pie. Um, but no, so so places where where this won't happen, and it's a pleasant place, and you can get your slice and the one you ordered. It's Slice on Broadway up here. SliceOnBroadway.com. They also got another location in the south here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Carnegie, PA, if you're on your way out to the airport, maybe if you're visiting us, you know, maybe you wanted to visit the Mayhem here in Pittsburgh. Stop by that uh, exit for Carnegie uh, down Main Street as well, uh, and thank them for supporting us on the show. Guys! Wrestling. Wrestling wrestling wrestling. Wrestling 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 wrestling, 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 wrestling. I'm trying to bring it up from that last email because I'm still kind of recovering from that. Um, Bobby, you talked about on Boss Battle this trailer for yes. WWE 2K15. Uh, can you tell me, uh, um, one, the trailer looks kick ass. You're right. You, I agree with everything you said on there on Boss Battle. Um, but there is one weird thing that that was included with the trailer. 
it, it it's it's amazing. It looks amazing. Vince McMahon is stuck in 1999. It's stuck. I don't know what what Riz is doing. Well, go ahead, Bobby. He's stuck Please. in 1999. I'm okay. just listening to my favorite song right now. Like like we said on, on Boss Bad. What is happening? Like we said on Boss Bad. <laughs> at least it's not Limp Biscuits Rollin' or any other Limp Biscuits song. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Vince's favorite. Vince's uh, favorite. We have, we have killed Lunchbox, I think. Vince's favorite artists come from 1990. 99. And. You know, around that area. But yeah, um, the the game looks amazing. This and and it's not even that the, the the song is is it's it's a decent song. It goes well with what they showed in the trailer. But is WWE so out of touch that they can only use like that era of music? I want to point out, I don't think it's it's just WWE's decision. Yeah, I mean, this is this is two K sports. Yeah. Hey, does two K sports have have a history of uh, digging back in the well for music? Um, no, because they they do the Borderlands ones and their well, trailers. No, well, not sports. Yeah, that's two K. Well, they also they also had Jay Z do uh, NBA two yeah. K. Yeah, one of their games. They, they had must, them direct it. I could I can imagine use it. So I can, it's I can imagine Vince McMahon backstage. You're you're gonna use Kid Rock, damn it! Right, right. You gotta use Kid Rock. Come on, guys. It is what all the kids are listening to nowadays. Is it? Like, no, it, it isn't. All the thirty-year-old no, year kids. I don't think kids. so. That's not. That's not what's happening. You Please, know, you'd be surprised. Kid Rock was on uh, 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 Silicon Valley. Yeah, he was. It was funny though. <laughs> it was hilarious. Nobody was paying attention to him. I, I don't know the kids. The kids are. I don't know if they're being ironic with their T-shirts at the high school football games I've been filming. But there's a lot of Green Day and Nirvana I've noticed. Um, so those, those bands are timeless. Yes, so. they're timeless. I, it's also timeless. very scary when I was are new again. I it was also really scary that that like when I went to teach at at a PTI, a technical school here in the area, there everybody was wearing the same T-shirts that we were in our art school ten years earlier. Mm-hmm. Like it was all insane clown posse and slipknot. Time work. Everything stuck in a time new work. again. Apparently, that's it's just it's just true weird. story. True huh. story. My my sister once called Kid Rock Kid Kicking. That that is all. Was she a baby? <laughs> Th- thanks, thanks, Bobby, for like driving the. Oh, what is this show become? A... What's going on? <laughs> she called him Kid Kicking. I I just thought that was hilarious. Wrestling. That's... That's Welcome weird. to Kid Rock Cast. That's weird. Also, oh news from the weekend, of course, the big. Uh, D- Wait. What? I have one last thing to say about. About Kid Rock? Do we really need no, to? No, no, no. About <laughs> WWE 2K15. Okay. Uh, so, I don't have any of the next gen consoles. I didn't get an Xbox yeah. One or a PS4. I slunk all my money into building this big sum bitch right here. And you look good tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's because of the work I put into um, my uh, my uh, my friend here. Uh, Boxatron three thousand. Boxatron three thousand. Mm-hmm. That's actually called the satellite of love. Um, that's actually a hamper. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's just a hamper. I'm broadcasting from. <laughs> anyway, um, there is a rumor going around on the WWE network. There's a photo of some box art appeared briefly. WWE two K fifteen for the PC. Ooh. Oh, and I can't tell you how excited I am about that because I had resigned myself to not getting to play this game. Mm-hmm. So, and it, uh, 2K has a has has Steam to thank for all this stuff too. Oh yes, because mm-hmm. NBA 2K is on there. Uh, that's pretty much all they have now. Uh, but 2K is going to put WWE. Is probably going to put WWE on Steam soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, hope, I, I sincerely hope they do. There's no launch date um, announced or anything like that. But I might consider that. I actually might consider that. I have a uh, you know a brand new a couple brand pretty new computers that 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 probably run pretty well on. Um, cool, 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 cool. Cool. I don't think I don't think there has been a PC wrestling game since WWE Raw, which was the PC version of the yeah. Xbox One game. I have to find out. 
You have to find oh, out. God. What if there's other PC games? Guys, going back to Kid Rock, though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Bobby, no. We need to talk about Kid Rock, like much like Kevin about <laughs> about this Kid Rock. Okay. Um. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm curious too. Uh. Anyways, we should we should move. Uh, so so Roman Reigns Pro Wrestling X. It is currently it's a Kickstarter. Uh, project Pro Wrestling X only for Linux, PC, and Mac. Uh, it is. It has exceeded its. Oh, it, this project was successfully funded on April seventh. Is, that, uh, is, is that based on Wrestling Society X? Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. Shaky cam and everything. Um, Fake explosions. It looks like it was funded. It's currently on Steam Greenlight, and it has been greenlit. So I should go play this right now, <laughs> right at this very moment. No, no, no. Let's finish the podcast first. Oh. <laughs> wow, it did. All right. I, I hope that's concept art because otherwise it doesn't look great. I don't know. I, uh, this this art on the their page, prowrestlingx.com, looks like, well, that looks weird. Um, anyways, uh, well, we'll go to break. We'll come back for Remember One. In the meantime, please go check out sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Plenty of DVDs, awesome stuff. Uh, coming up later this week will be the IWC event from this past weekend. Tremendous three-way match with Sammy Guerva. Guevara, damn it, every time. Uh, Facade and Andrew Palace, two to three of them are uh, big friends of the Indie Mayhem Show uh, uh, and have been on in recent months. Go to check that out in the Indie Mayhem Show playlist over at Wrestling Mayhem Show's YouTube. Um, but um, all the way down from matches for 99 cents for the IWC, um, you know, full shows for as low as $5.99. If you go over to SorgatronMedia.com, Right now, sign up for the mailing list, the newsletter, the email list. Uh, you will get a free digital download uh, yeah. for new signups. Right now, that's RWA's Unleashed for a great cage match Ooh. with uh, Ryan Mitchell and Ryan Edmonds. Also, a great TLC match with friend of the show G Raver, uh, who's been doing some great things uh, as part of Generation Dead lately. And of course, Jay Ice. Uh, uh, if you want to go experience some indie wrestling, uh, that's a good place to start. You get to see uh, the quality of the digital downloads, the quality of what we're doing over there for free, and you get updates for on all the podcasts, insert coin to begin.com, weekly updates, um, uh, and all the releases we do uh, throughout the weeks. Um, and including you know what's going on with the IWC, the RWA, the VOW, um, the the uh, Prime Wrestling releases that we're doing, uh, a lot of stuff going on around here, and everything else going on too with Sorgatron Media. Uh, that's worth uh, that we're, that's worth putting out there in email form. Uh, so go sorgatronmedia.com, click on the links, check out the DVDs, support some indie wrestling, and support us, please through sorgatronmedia.com. Here's a little look at the last RWA show, uh, which was Fall Free For All 6, including BJ Whitmer of Ring of Honor showing up, um, and a uh, great women's match, great show, um, just for uh, uh, $8.99 on the digital download, or $7.99, I think. Wait, whatever it is, you'll see it on the site. Uh, but go check that out. Here's a trailer, and we'll be right back with Remember When. National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Yes, we're back. And please check out, again, the DVDs over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. And and also, you saw an ad there for National Podcasting Day. We'll be celebrating in some fashion here. National Podcasting Day. 
That's this why I haven't been saying bro. anything on the show. <laughs> oh, <we have> <laughs> uh, Bobby, yes. But as far as that, actually, you know, as far as national park podcasting goes, they goes. Yes, first of all, podcast. the big thing is let people know about podcasting and, and let us know. Uh, uh, include us in a tweet at Mayhem Show or at Sorgatron or at Sorgatron Media. Let us know what podcast you're listening to. At the Nerdist. Um, no, no. Um, let me know on the. <laughs> Oh, I've been I've Bobby been tweeting. To Dead uh, I, I've been listening to at Panel Riot. There you go. There you yeah. go. Support podcasting. Tell somebody. Pick one person. Maybe explain podcasting to your mother. Oh God, no, no, pass. no, <laughs> no, Sorg. If you're like somebody, like I think you're somebody who enjoy podcasting. You look I'd, like a podcasting that's, kind of fellow. I would what, tell. I'd be like, "Hey, mom, I'm doing this podcast." She'd be like, "I don't care." Maybe that's what Vanilla Ice was trying to do to get word <laughs> to our mothers about podcasting. Word to your mothers oh, about oh, podcasting, oh, oh. exactly. So with that, let's go to remember when. Uh, LB. Oh, LB. What the bar, the bang, <laughs> What is happening? Uh, 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 stuck uh, in a repeat loop. Uh, uh, stuck in a repeat loop. Uh, remember when? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, bravo. Bravo. So, so, it was, was angelic right there. Special thanks that. to Reggie Watts for that. Okay. Um. Uh, this week, you know, United Champions just happened, guys. So I was wondering, what? Oh, oh, no, 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 oh, no, not no, again. No, 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 no. no. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Sorry. Uh, United Champions just went down over the weekend. So I thought, what better way than uh, what are some championship matches that you recall? The, I guess there's a lot of them, I'm sure. But any specific that stick out in your mind? Anybody? I'll go. Go for it, Wheels. Yeah, I might as well go first for once. At Hot Wheels All RWA right. joining us on the Hangout line. Yeah, even though you put it under Bobby earlier. Um. Mm. Anyways, free plugs, man. I know. Well, even well, though it was two. Two. So it wasn't really a free plug, <laughs> unless you know a Hooters delivery service. I do have wheels, Mike. But anyways, <laughs> back to the championship. <laughs> Hooters has planes. I like that you're doing the remember when pose as you're talking and trying to remember when. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay, so my championship would be 1985. Oh, wow. And I wonder wow. what I'd be talking about. Hang the man who started it all for me to watch wrestling defeated a man who we all still love to the day. Cheeky baby. And this man I am talking about is the real American, the original real American, Hulk Hogan. I thought it was Jack Swagger. <laughs> I, I said the original, Bobby. He was the original. <laughs> you mean Christopher Columbus? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Tr- he's the original OG. Who'd he ever beat? Uh, the uh, Indians. Yeah, the Aztecs. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we all just okay. I guess, I guess that was a that one. That was <laughs> yeah. not a good question to ask. Yeah. Violently, was Hulk Hogan. By I, God, that's Christopher Columbus's music. <laughs> By God, he had a family. Tonka in a Who Did It First match. <laughs> oh. 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 Tom had a really long undefeated bad touch. Oh. Bad touch. All right, all right. Oh. Well, Mad Mike also joins us from Poughkeepsie, New York. How, we got any championship matches in in mind? Uh, the only one. I don't know why this is popping to my brain, but Survivor Series 2002, Trish Stratus and Victoria had an awesome hardcore match. What? I don't. <laughs> I don't know why that came to my brain. That's oh. just what happened when you said championship matches. You know, on, and I'm picturing Trish 
doing a Matrix move while holding a trash can lid, then popping back up and slamming Victoria in the head with it. You know, on that line, I I really enjoyed the uh, women's championship match between Trish Stratus and uh, Mickey James at WrestleMania that one year. (laughs) The one that's censored on WWE Network for later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a good match. It was a damn good match. And it was. Yeah, Mickey definitely got the V in that one, sort of. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Riz, how about you? (laughs) Um. Actually, mine's also a hardcore match. Okay. Uh, how about the Headbangers <laughs> and Crash Holly? Oh, in the ball pit. Yes, Riz. The- was that was that at Discovery Zone? No, no, it was just at a it, like fun it park. Off, it was an off-brand ah! Discovery Zone. Oh. Did I just was take that yours? Bobby's? Yeah. What? Wow, oh, Bobby. Like Bobby, you because have the worst luck. Only with I thought it was. I thought it was against the Mean Street Posse. But no, 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 yeah. no, it was against okay. the Headbangers. Okay, okay, I didn't um, pick Bobby first. Just, just the fact that it was so random, and it worked so well between the characters that they had at that time. Like Crash Holly wasn't like he. He was kind of, you know, a kid, <laughs> and the Headbangers were. Two crazy guys, mm-hmm. and they just f- went at it in a discovery zone ish type area. I remember Crash escaping, sliding down the slide. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and the and the cameraman followed him, which was rather impressive. I would, I would have if I was that cameraman. All right, what about you? What, what about you? I LB? found a video of that online set to the Betty Hill theme music. What about you, LB? I think I found your button. There you are. Yeah, the LB button. Mm. Specially mm. installed. Push that button. I can't find the fucking date. Um. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck it. All right, 2011, Money in the Bank. Uh, they redid yes. the Summer of Punk storyline, and CM Punk fought uh, John Cena and won the title. And let me tell you, it was a great, great match. That was the beginning of the realization that uh, uh, John Cena can rise to the level of his opponent, and they had they had a great match. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Bobby FJ Town? Uh, mine was taken, um, but I'm gonna go with. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm gonna go with uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship. I just remember the build of that feud and just an awesome match from them too. So I don't remember when it was either, but probably like '96. Yeah, I had to scramble to get a new one. <laughs> I believe it was '97. '97, something, like something like that. Uh, guys, let us know. You'll remember when, of course. Sure. Uh, what was yours? Mine was sure. Mickey and Trish. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. oh, I thought you were just joking. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. It's kind of a broad remember when. Sorry about that. Um, but if you got one, what's a, what's a championship you liked? What's a pa- championship that's memorable in your memory? Hashtag remember when on the Twitter is at Mayhem Show or on comments wherever we post this video. Um, so with that, hey, a big shout out to our friends ProWrestlingTees.com. They followed us on Twitter, guys. Go follow yeah. them. Oh my God. ProWrestlingTees.com. Famous. <laughs> slash WMS is where you go for your Pro Wrestling Tees needs. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. That rhymes. Sure, go there. Of course, check out the great stuff from us at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Great designs by Alex Cars. And then other wrestling gear, including AJ Styles. Dusty Rhodes still has one. I, I don't, these guys that are in WWE that have pages on here perplex me. Ken Steen still has a, show, uh, a page on here. Young Bucks, uh, Friends of the Show, uh, ACH, Anthony Nice, uh, Luke Gallows, all kinds of people. Uh, DJ hey, Z. Hey, Zima. Can I make a uh, what? A can what? I make a suggestion, Sorg? Yes. Uh, if you're going, if you're going to pro wrestling tees, uh, first go to wrest- uh, the wrestling stuff. But also Johnny Cockstrong. <laughs> he is a superhero who uses him himself as an of- offensive weapon. Huh? He oh. always has a good time doing doing it too. Don't often all achieving, wrestlers do that? Oh, but often achieving victory with his cockfoolery wrestling style and in the pants pile driver. 
you can see him fight the forces of evil in Beyond Wrestling, where he was the former points leader for over seven months. I kind of feel violated right now. Good. I do too. Beyond the Wrestling has gone downhill, hasn't it? Wow. So there you go. Beyond Wrestling is represented somehow. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. I feel disgusted doing that sort. Hey, so you're the one that interrupted. Dude. There you go. That's... Doesn't every wrestler use themselves as an offensive weapon? It's, it, it, it's, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be about his, you know. Yeah, no, I get it, but. It, 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 it's, in, it's in his name. <laughs> that, I, don't, I don't get it. Uh, He's not just strong. He's not of course. Strong. Okay, moving on. Um, so, Night of, Champions, Night of Champions was past weekend, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that happened. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought a very strong start. And we had our usually uh, Orton, Orton Lowell. The Orton match has become the pee break for me. Um, the That's Divas, I thought. That was a long pee. That was a long pee. That was a long pee. What did you guys think of the show in general? I enjoyed the Divas match, strangely enough. Mm-hmm. I was, was going to say the same thing. Match. I, I, I was in at the college watching it, and I said, normally I'd be in the bathroom right now just trying to take up a lot of time. Just to shitting away. Just hanging yeah. out. Just hanging <laughs> out. I just fucking blasting that match. fucking porcelain. <laughs> yep. Just goddamn machine gun style. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking divas, screaming brown water at the top. Wow! Hashtag this matches the drizzling shit. Fucking nightmare scenario. Oh, Oh, wheels! Okay, okay, okay. Dial back, guys. Dial back. Oh wow. What um, has this podcast become? I, I don't know what the fuck just happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know either. L- Lunchbox just like left his body for a little Lunchbox, bit. Lunchbox, I think mm-hmm. we just need to get you some Imodium. I, th- I think that'll solve most problems. Imodium? Shit, I need a fucking Valium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, Lunchbox, you had a very interesting experience, as uh, you'll see here on the video, guys. They put um, me in a box! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're Dean Ambrose now. They put me in a box and then made fun of me for being in the box. It was really <laughs> psychologically fucked up. Nobody puts lunchbox in a box. That's a conundrum. <laughs> Can't have a box in a box. So so last month there was the Team Cena section, and this time they had a Team Cena box. And, and LB was in that box for the entire three-hour pay-per-view. <laughs> Oh my yeah, god, you were? Yes, he was. See, even at a certain point, we had to move from the basement to another room because the WWE network wasn't working well on the, on the Wi-Fi, Um, and he walked up the stairs and through the hallway to the new room and sat down. Some solid lunchbox. In the box. (laughs) We had to feed him. Mm -hmm. Um, No, wait, no, no, no. Time out. Time out. It looks like you chose to feed him. Sort. We didn't feed you. Feed lunchbox. (laughs) I fed lunchbox. I also want to point out in this shot, and you can check all these shots out at Instagram.com slash Sorgatron. Uh, in this shot, yes, he's ha- he's, he has the uh, 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 John Cena uh, wrestle buddy, but also notice in the background on the wall of the box is a Dean Ambrose picture. <laughs> framed because picture. of course there is. This, lunchbox, lunchbox, this joke is for us, but it was Metal Gear Solid, so, solid butt, butt snake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, LB, LB, uh, how was your Team Cena box? Uh, team Cena <laughs> box was fine. It was a little hot in there, especially because uh, uh, their kid kept throwing stuffed animals in there with me. Uh, and, then Riz, and then Riz farted in it. Oh, no. Riz, you <laughs> hotboxed the box? I hotboxed the box. He oh, did. He did. an asshole, Riz. <laughs> but then he did get me back in the car. I did. I <laughs> Why? I held him down in the back seat and I put myself into his butthole. <laughs> wow. This uh, has become a very personal podcast. Very oh, Riz did the biggest job last night. Right. Oh, no. Oh, oh, he did the job. Riz I did. did the job. 
though. That hurts. No, I farted. Oh. All. I farted a bunch. No uh, more fan fiction. <laughs> or more fan fiction. This this is like wrestling mayhem fan fiction tonight. All right. Aside from the, why, I also at one fuck point it, there was a puppet letters. show. Too. Write us letters. Oh, oh, oh Cesaro versus Sheamus was also awesome. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. That was amazing. I could watch. I want them to have a two out of three falls match. Oh yes. Oh, that's Seriously. great. That's a good rivalry. And it's just yeah. them punching each other in the face. Two out of yes. three falls so, punching Mike, match. Mike, I will one up your two out of three falls. An Iron Man match. Yes, but in mm. in the state of WWE, they're not going to do an Iron Man match for a mid card title. So I don't care. They could they must do it? They could. They, no, of course they could. They're not gonna, but they could. <laughs> Um, You're there, I, a hell in the cell with those. I can see them doing like maybe like a thirty minute Iron Man, which no, they, that's they've a done. On, thing. But no, they've done that on SmackDown before too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. So it's that. not outside the yeah. realm for them to do it. Um, hey, when was it? Um, wasn't it a? Wasn't it that time they had Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar on SmackDown? That was sixty minutes. That was sixty minutes. I swear they yeah. did a thirty minute at some point. No, TNA did. A couple thirty minute with it, like AJ and Daniels and stuff like that, but I don't yeah. think WWE has ever done one. Wouldn't that be a ten man match or something like that? Oh, uh, point out uh, to the chat the chat room. Actually, there was like a giant hole in the back of the box. <laughs> That's true. Very awkwardly placed. Uh, that is a true uh, thing. Yeah. Like in the so middle of his box is, is middle of his back, so it didn't really work out for anything. A hospital gown of box. That's what you think, Sorg. I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys figured out, but. Um, but otherwise, no. Okay, so the, the main event, and I imagine again. Uh, apparently, this is probably what um, uh, this is probably what what was mostly the vitriol on Twitter is about. Is this uh, uh, ending to the pay per view uh, where we did have Seth Rollins uh, come in, interrupt, and we have a disqualification win for John Cena, uh, prolonging our Brock Lesnar situation. Uh, to uh, apparently to Hell in a Cell, I would I would suppose, right? Um, yeah. Which makes sense for me. And uh, and uh, what do you guys think of that? Were you guys uh, uh, dismayed, or were you were you kind of happy to see Seth Rollins uh, uh, at least attempt? That surprised me. Yeah, yeah that that was a very good surprise. I mean, mm-hmm. just even him, just even showing, hey, I'll even go after Brock Lesnar. Yes. When he did the curb stomp on him, I went, that just puts you up there higher, Seth. The only thing that I didn't like is both, and this is not going to sound like I'm saying something bad, but both Cena and Lesnar no sold finishers that night. And the one, and, and I, we know John Cena has done it in the past. But the one that everybody keeps missing is Brock Lesnar was hit with the curb stomp minutes before minutes before he got up minutes after he got up and then started wrecking people wrecking John Cena afterwards after he saved him and it's just to the point where it was like you're getting mad at John Cena but you're missing the point about Brock Lesnar doing the same exact thing. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the curb stump isn't as established like as a finner and as, as a finisher for Seth Rollins yet. He's only been using it as like his finish as a solo. You're saying it's not seen. It's not but seen it's, as like a he, devastating, uh, a, a devastating finisher. Like we look at the he, F5. But he was weakened for the entire match. He had the, he had the, STF put on him. He had the F, uh, attitude adjustment. He had all those other things put on him, and then he just gets curb stomped and then jumps back up. Listen, everybody. Yeah, he didn't just jump back up. Then Cena went to attack Seth, and yeah, they brawled yeah. on the outside yeah. for a little bit. Uh, it's not like it's not like Brock got up and wasn't injured at all. He was just. He is still Brock Lesnar. I mean, even if he's hurt, he's going to do some damage regardless. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, the point is, John Cena is getting a lot of flack for no selling finishers. Am I wrong about that? No. Mm-mm. But 
Brock Lesnar also has that same problem, and nobody decided to talk about it. Well, both of these are you going to tell Brock Lesnar he's doing something wrong? <laughs> no. Okay, he's got a point there, but but <laughs> still, not personally. But, that is, but on the internet, point. when we have a shield, um, um, yeah, no, 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 no. But no, that's no. also Lesnar's gimmick: is that he's a real fighter. Like mm-hmm. this is a guy who it's not going to take one finisher to beat him. This is a guy who will straight up murder you if he gets a chance with his mm. bare hands. Like this is a guy who took off his glove so he could punch harder. Like yeah. that's not like that's not a guy who's going to go down very easily. Sixteen suplexes. And yeah. he only hit, bear we could make it. He only hit two on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking previous sixteen, and Cena barely could finish a match. He only hit mm-hmm. two on Sunday. Um, this match turned more into a regular match, yeah, than we got the first time. The first time was making a point, and it was a story. You know, we talk about, um, you know, we talk about the stories and matches a year earlier. Um, I almost brought up uh, the when we were kind of amazed by the uh, uh, uh. Alberto Del Rio against Dolph Ziggler match when there was the concussion kind of angle there and and Del Rio doing kind of a slow turn kind of thing. Yeah, um, they it did was a double turn. Yeah, they, they did the. It wasn't a double turn because Dolph wasn't a fish. I think he was pretty much faced before uh, going into that. He was getting cheered, but it wasn't a okay. Face. But they didn't officially make him a face. They didn't make him sympathetic yeah. yet. Um, but but watching that match, it was not a good wrestling match. It was not a good technical wrestling match, but it's a fantastic story. It was one of the better double turns I've seen in a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it, it's tricky to do a double turn, you know? Um, but the, the most classic is uh, Bret Hart and Stone Cold, for instance. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Eh? Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that no. an affirmation? No, I don't think no. yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought I heard a dismissive. Eh. Um, mm-hmm. But still, uh, you know that. But really, it it it, it, it is. Um, um, and I think that's what we got at SummerSlam was like this isn't a wrestling match. This is a story, and you're here for the story. You're not here for a wrestling match. You're in for a John Cena Brock match. What are you think you're in here for, anyways? If nothing else. They're brawls. I came for the suplexes. I came for the suplexes. <laughs> you mean the suplexes? I think that's why the rest of the wrestling on the show was. Was so pretty solid top, top to notch. Yeah. Um, highlights there are definitely that tag match. Again, we talked earlier about mm-hmm. uh, these killer matches that the tag teams have had like at the turn of the year um, with the three ways and everything like that. I think, uh, you know, and, and, and I was uh, reading some stuff like some comics and stuff that were like making fun of. Actually, I think it was the Chibi Wrestler thing um, where they were making fun of how how the Usos like have the same match and they're kind of boring. Um but they bring in that pay per views, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like I think a lot of those guys can be guilty of. Yeah, I'm going to do go through the pretty much the the you know we're not going to have classic match day in day out on a Raw and SmackDown, guys. It's it's not positioned to be it. They can't have a match on that level as much as they work. You know. Well, I remember a couple weeks, a couple months ago we said that the uh, Usos versus the Wyatts were like that was like one of the best matches on the pay per view. It certainly was. And so the same thing with Sunday night. Hmm. Uh, Mike, you were saying something? Yeah, I think this kind of ties into what you guys were talking about before, like the problem, like we need squash matches back and stuff like that. I think like the regular matches, like we say the Usos have the same match all the time, but that's only on Raw and SmackDown. Like I think that is the new version of the squash match where it's just like you have even Stevens booking. You have a lot of the same plot lines you have a lot like a lot of the same spots and everything but when they do have the pay-per-view matches they are able to turn it up and they are able to bring out some innovative stuff nikki bella did a springboard like hurricane rana for christ's sake Mm -hmm. like like i think that's part of because wwe realizes they can't do job or squash matches anymore in this day and age when they're trying to get ratings they're trying to keep the stock prices high that's not going to work so what they'll do is they'll give us John Cena versus Randy Orton for a thir- for the umpteenth thousandth time. But at the pay-per-view, you're going to get Seth versus Dean in a Hell in a Cell probably. And that will be amazing. Like, they're going to give you the stars that you want. It's just going to be kind of middling. Because, I mean, it's not like squash matches are exactly exciting. It's just a way to get someone on TV and to get them over and to get them TV time. Establish what they are, too. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, it was, um, I mean, uh, you know, let's kind of think we we're talking the squash matching thing. You have King Kong Bundy just destroy a bunch of people, you know, ranging from the no name to maybe a Bruce the Barber beefcake on, on, on superstars. Right. Uh, until he gets to the Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan overcomes. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of yeah. You're right. You can't do that. You you have to do it in more inventive ways and something different for sure. So, um, can I actually transition that because this is another thing uh, watching that show. I, I and LB, I might have commented this uh, while while we're sitting there, uh, but kind of looking at actually, I think I made a I made a asinine remark on Twitter about this. Um, we are. It was kind of to the effect of we are living vicariously through the wrestlers we really want to see uh, through their women. Um, between between <laughs> oh the, oh yeah yeah between the Bellas between AJ Lee um, not say you know you know stupid CM Punk chance for one thing or we're getting yes chance with Bree or, or whatever that's not the point I'm I'm trying to make it's more um, don't think that these girls aren't learning something from their significant others. You know what I mean, and I think they're all beca- now. I, now AJ, I think, was fantastic to begin with, um, and, and is just getting light years and light years better and better. Um, but it, but the Bellas um, has anybody raise your hand if you have a we, we Mike just admitted to it. Uh, we're impressed by a Bellas match in the last six months. Yeah, at several. some point, that, several that times. That Divas match last night was uh, not last night. The night before mm-hmm. was phenomenal. Uh, when the Divas came out, or Divas when the Bellas came out and started arguing last night. I turned off my computer in rage and went to bed. He he (laughs) muted me because he heard it through my computer. That's true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm still going to say this. My most anticipated match with SummerSlam was Bree and Stephanie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But but that that was... Hopefully, my dream match for WrestleMania is Stephanie and Triple H versus Bree and Daniel Bryan. I still want that to happen. I think that would be amazing. I think that would be balls out fun. Yeah, yeah. A uh, side note, um, I don't know if you guys noticed that her uh, 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 a tremendous outfit from SummerSlam, Stephanie McMahon's, is uh, available for auction uh, for that Connor Connor's Cure uh, Foundation uh, that they've been they've been supporting. Um, already up to twelve twelve hundred dollars when I checked it last night during RAW. So I'm not saying I wow. bid. But... Not saying you bid on it. Not saying what you would do with it. Is that a cat behind you, or are you about to get yeah, attacked by a that's monster? That's my cat. It's my parrot that doubles as my cat. That's that's another animal. We had Bryce we had Bryce Rensburg's dog on earlier. Um, so welcome to Animal Cast. Welcome to Animal Cast. He's just animal just hanging crazy. out back there. Look at that. <laughs> it's just like like I want to talk wrestling too. I'm going to observe this show. <laughs> He's a good. Kid. I have good hearing, so I know what you're saying over his headphones. <laughs> I heard you talking about me. Anyways, I'm her, sorry. I'm so sorry. Her favorite wrestler by proxy is Chris Jericho. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Do you guys have any other thoughts about that? About like the the the, the raising of, of say the Bellas. Uh, you know, even even I think Nikki has improved. Um, maybe that, last night was the. Uh, I mean, not last night. Um, night Champions was the first match where Nikki actually looked like she has been trying really hard to improve. Mm-hmm. Bree's been doing it for a little bit now, but that was the first match where I thought Nikki actually gave a shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Their wrestling has improved vastly. Their promo, the promo skills are oh, no. garbage. Yeah. Exactly. They're saying oh. the same goddamn five things every fucking time. I they am. Promo you know, skills. This I is think about more... you never caring about me and never giving me a chance. Cool. You've been saying that for eight months. Fuck you. I'm done with Raw. I I think their promos. I think their promos are more designed. To be segments on Total Divas, yeah, than segments on Raw. Uh, I I made the comment because a lot. They have a lot of the same intonations yeah. and a lot of the same mannerisms that they do on Total Divas. So I I felt like I I made the comment I think last night that I was like, well, this really feels like I'm seeing a live segment from Total Divas on Raw. Yeah, we we've made the comparison. Bobby and I made this comparison. I think uh, Mad Mike was here too. Uh, but but during the first season of Total Divas. The first things that came out of my mouth, because it was on E, was that the Bellas are just the Kardashians. They don't have anything nice to say about anything. They say the same things over and over again. 
And they have the same dreadly voice that everybody has. I saw a Range yeah. Rover when I was driving errands Rover. today. Rover. And I, every time Rover. I see him, I'm Range Rover! It was a good thing my cat was on camera because she almost tried to eat a penny. <laughs> what? Bobby. I had a penny uh, that... sitting on my bed and I, saw, I looked back and I saw her like chewing. Bobby, Bobby. isn't that her yeah. name? Yeah. That's her name, yeah. Penny. Christmas. That would be, that would be really All right, awesome. let's get out of here before before Bobby's cat gotcha dies. Um, what guys? What'd you learn from cat Heimlich maneuver? What'd you learn from yeah. wrestling uh, oh. uh, uh, this okay. week? And it can, can include I, Night of Champions. What, what's up, Bobby? Can I go first? Yeah, please. Since so everybody we, takes my stuff. Yeah, because you were so screwed up earlier. Yeah, yeah. I learned. I learned that Dean Ambrose when he left. Uh, went to Vegas, escaped from the hospital, went to Vegas, uh, and and studied under the tutelage of Chris Angel, so he could disappear from the the, the room that he was in, that he was locked in, and reappear in that box. Magic. Uh, uh, you didn't say anything about Tony Wonder, did you? I what? Huh? Mm-hmm. What? I, I, I love Wonder. I Tony love Wonder. that it's a game of where's Dean Ambrose gonna pop out of Wonder. next. Like Wonder. Wonder. keep that up, please. Like I just want him to be the magic man. He's eventually going to be under JBL's hat. I oh <laughs> I also I also oh my want God. I also want the Scott Stanford expose on how he got out of that room. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking yeah. news. On the WWE network. I told you how he got out of the room, Sorg. How was that again, Wheels? I said he got out of that room because Jen Carlin's went and let him go. <laughs> I'd actually buy that. <laughs> okay. 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 No, no, in that room, there was actually a um, a poster of Stacey Keebler on the wall. And Triple H walked back in there and said, What say you there, fussy britches? And there's a big hole behind it. Um, I don't understand I half Shawshank, of what just happened there. Shawshank Redemption, people. Watch oh. it. I want to go next. Uh, okay. uh, Hopi. Go next. Lunchbox, what's up? I have a couple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, I learned, I learned that um, Randy Orton has no respect for anything except for JBL's hat. <laughs> <'Cause> he, <laughs> the, 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 the feed froze. Um, we were watching the pay per view, and he was very gently handing JBL his hat because he was about to come out. <laughs> a picture of this too. That was, great. that was so cool. <laughs> and um, the second thing I learned is that uh, John Cena and Dean Ambrose are now anti-authority bros, and Jen Carlin's has been messaging me all day about hanging out in the Cena section. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you're both going to be in the box. Wait, wait, wait. So she's like just been hanging out in the box all day? No, she's going to during the next pay per view. She we're going to share the Cena section. Don't get awkward. Yeah, we're gonna probably going to take over the couch. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. Um, couch going to be Cena section. Wow. And Riz, I we're you're going to be nude and oiled and feeding us grapes. <laughs> that's that's the Kali section. <laughs> <laughs> Riz, what'd you learn? I learned that uh, for the past few months, America kind of sucks now. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, think about it. Jack Riz, Swagger. The NSA, the NSA is tapping this ja- no, right now. Jack Swagger. Mark Henry twice. Mm-hmm. Who do we have as a hero? Zeb still. Who will save Zeb's us? Out. Zeb still. In- uh, sugar packets yeah. from various restaurants. Mad Mike, you are correct. What is oh, this sugar Dallas thing? Is our inspiration right now? What was with the sugar deal with Zeb? On on SmackDown, Bo Dallas got into or he beat Jack Swagger, and after the match, he got the microphone. And he's like, "Why are you listening to Zeb? He steals ketchup or he still he steals sugar packets from various restaurants." Oh, <laughs> it was the best. It was the best. And then, and then, right after that, Jack Swagger kicked me in the face. That's amazing. It was. It was. A, it was amazing. What's really sad is that's probably is a real road story. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's probably based it's on something. Fan. They, they yeah. take anything they can get for free. Because there was a sign on the paper that says, "I've got lots of sugars for you, Zeb." Yeah. 
Yep, that's what it was from. Okay. Smackdown. Okay, I was trying to pull up that picture. Okay. <laughs> wow, wow. Who else is next? Uh, uh, Wheels, you went. Uh, Mad Mike, what about you? All right, I learned two things. Um, I learned, one, that the WWE watches our Hangouts after Raw uh, because I suggested that Dean should be under that box a fucking month ago when they took him out. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, he was under that fucking box. I don't know how he got there. It might be the Chris Angel thing. It might be the Shawshank thing. I don't care. I'm just glad that he was there. Um, it, was like, it was a Jen Collins thing, I'm telling you. I, it, that makes more sense than anything else at this point. She uh, hit him in the box. Uh, Actually, nope. he hit in her box. I was going to... Oh, God. I knew that was coming. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing I learned is that... Um, through some accidental internet searching, I realized that TNA has no idea what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. What? Yeah. No. Um, um, pretty they're, sure they're taping impacts after Bound for after Bound for Glory now. Oh yeah. They no. Are. Yep. Yeah. And they're so, horrible, um, they're horrible, horrible life decisions. E- even well, even if you don't know what happened, that's just not a good way to go about doing things. That's weird. Well, I guess Funky's on a roll. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of putting it. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Wheels, was I correct? Did we did we get you yet? Yeah, you got me. Oh, I did get you. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Is it just me? Am I, am sword, I the last one standing? Well, did you learn, sword, sword, what did you learn? <laughs> I learned that the new authority figure for the IWC will yell at me in the middle of a match. Um, our friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco, uh, who is a uh, partial owner, apparently, of the IWC, uh, it was yelling at me because we only have one camera. Um, and uh, he's yelling, like, two cameras. And I'm like, it's not my decision. Um, so that was interesting. No, good match. All, good, good all around. Go all around. And it's amazing to see what a show does when wrestlers, families come to their debut match and just sell out the place. So, um, but we'll talk about more of that on the Indie Mayhem show later. Guys, that's a segue. Oh, sword, sword, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. You're killing my learned... segue. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry. I forgot. I also learned that wearing wrestling shirts makes me really good at blackjack. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I wore an Ethan Carter shirt on Sunday and I won. I wore the Edge shirt today and I won. Huh. Guys. Gambling. It was yeah, my it was mom's birthday. Gambling. Hey, don't be gambling. Jimmy DeMarco bought his his portion of IWC with his winnings from the Rivers Casino, according to Storyline. <laughs> Cash money. Cash money. Cash uh, money. It's like I'm money, money. Guys, we are the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show Nation. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, What's Stitcher, up? Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, audio and video formats. Please like us, friend us, uh, comment on us all across the board. Uh, you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times. That's right. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> <laughs> four one or four one two two zero six WMS zero. You can also find us on the Twitters at Mayhem Show. You can find us on Facebook, Google Plus, the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Um, <laughs> why is Blip TV? Still, I, 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 I have what? the strongest urge to go to Panel Ride. Panel Ride dot com. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, also big thanks to uh, Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping out with the notes and tweets all night long. You can join us here live Tuesday at live dot media dot com at nine p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can also drop over that. Actually, the feed from the entire night is going to be up for the rest of the week, so you can relive the entire night of podcasting raw and uncut. Uh, uh, for that period, um, and maybe you can I don't know chat with yourself. Wait, should apparently, we be like, should we be like stripping right now, Sorg? Is that no, that's not what you should be doing at all. I actually. can't strip because I'm wearing my wrestling mayhem show shirt. Oh, oh look, look at that right there! Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Why is that not working? There it is. Whoa! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's pretty fantastic right it's there. so comfortable. The Guys, please go check out all of our uh, friends here on the show. Check out the Indie Mayhem Show at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out at DJ Lunchbox, uh, as well as at Panel Riot. Check out at Mad Mike 4883 Check out at VE Riz. Check out at Hot Wheels RWA and all the great stuff going on at RWALive.com, including Hurricane Shane Helms is coming in November, guys. 
Yay! Yeah, check that out. Bobby What's F J that? Town is up at Bobby F J Town. Ham and Riz do a little thing called InsertCoinToBegin.com, as well as Boss That's Battle right. is the podcast for that on the Surgeon Media Network. Um, and I'm uh, I'm Mike. I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, Hi. 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 Mike. on the Twitter. Sorgatron.com. Sorgatronmedia.com. He runs the internet. He is the internet. This is correct. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Mayhem out. 